So hello brothers and sisters. I'm sorry I had to do a really quick video today. Cause I, I just need to get this off my chest and I don't know who to go to about this. And it's really funny because a lot of videos that I've seen say the same thing. Now there's not much on this person. So let me start from the beginning and let you guys know. So basically about a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I had a subscriber who told me to look into this one person, okay? And I did look into this person, and truth be told, I could not find much on this man, okay? The only thing that I can say is that many witches were looking into him prophecy-wise, okay? I saw a lot about him with the psychics and with the tarot cards and all those people. I did not go deep into it because I'm not, I just don't like to. So um, I didn't watch any of the videos, but I was like, what's up with this? This is very skeptical, very interesting indeed. Well, I've been meditating on it, you know? That's just another person that I add. So I'm, I actually really like when people do this because, I mean, I'm only one person. I only have two eyes. <laughs> I can't see everything myself. So, well, I happen to wake up, I, you know, you guys know I'm in Asia. So I'm on the complete opposite time frame of the US. And I see that something was uploaded about 24 hours ago. It's a documentary on this man. So his name is Joseph. Gregory Hallett. Joseph meaning to be added to or in surplus, right? Um, Gregory meaning to be watchful, to observe, to watch. A watchman, be on standby. And Hallett. That one's interesting. I'm going to come back to you on that one. Um, that one's going to be a breakdown. So, this man is claiming that he is the true king to the UK throne. Okay? Now, in this documentary, here's, a, here's where it just gets to be too much. Not only is he claiming to be king, but he's also claiming to be the messiah okay now look this man is very meticulous very very particular about what he says so when he's talking to like an atheist crowd he likes to mention that messiah is just a title and that it just means someone who carries out um how did he word it who carries out a plan that was planned in the past. Something along those lines, um, which it is. Um, and look, I've talked about this on previous videos, about these titles. So, Jesus is the Messiah and the Christ, okay? But he said many will come in my name. And then there's gonna be the Antichrist. So this is something that we need to be watchful towards. Now here's, here's what really has me um, thrown for a loop. So he starts talking about that. He brings up other deities like Zeus is one of his favorites to bring up. He talks, about, he talks about how he fulfills prophecy and how he was born during a certain time frame that he should have been born, okay? He talks about how not only is he Messiah and and king of the UK, but also he said that he is the Mashiach. Or he, he doesn't say it flat out, but he basically says that he meets all the criteria and that he was born during a certain time. And so, okay. I'm gonna give my thoughts on this. I'm gonna link that, that documentary below, okay? So this next portion that I want to talk about, 
make sure you watch that and then come back to me okay because the things that i'm going to be saying are things that he's saying in the video so here's what i'm here's what i'm meditating on and what i'm looking forward to now he's already been smashed by like because obviously he's building his case he has paperwork to prove it um there's a lot of conspiracies it talks about the rothschilds um and how the queen is not the true bloodline that should be there he talks about how he has 24 chromosomes and he's the only person to have this i don't know if this was on this documentary or on something else i watched um i mean this man talks about prophecy over and over again so basically he's bringing up all these prophecies and how he meets all this criteria and that basically it's already been awarded to him he talks about how the queen went into hiding she agrees to it and she's nowhere to be found in the buckingham uh buckingham palace is boarded up so you cannot see inside and he says it's due to the coronavirus that she's missing um then he said that the pope anointed him and what i also think is interesting is that the pope also got rid of that title of christ that vicor um very interesting indeed also he says that the time that trump took the bible and stood in front of the church to take pictures was an innuendo towards him about how trump bows down to him look what i'm looking for in these next couple days is i'm looking for whiplash <laughs> So this, I don't know how long ago this came out. It, the documentary is called The Hidden King. And it's very interesting what he's saying. I'm waiting for Trump to come. I mean, Trump is extremely, he's a brute. God bless, baby. He's a brute when it comes to speaking his mind. He kind of like doesn't have a brain with that stuff so i'm looking into is trump gonna come out and say i never did that i'm looking into maybe whiplash from the prince um the he went hiding too uh the queen if she has to say anything about this and i mean he basically alluded to the fact that he may be the mashiach or he meets all the criteria so waiting on whiplash from maybe israel saying uh-uh but he called himself the king of israel you guys i don't know now i will say something else that's really interesting about him is that his emblem or his coat of arms is also a seven and a seven and then it has another hidden seven now, according to my research, I've seen something really interesting regarding the number seven. It also has to do with Saturn, and it is like a false Christ number, okay? Um, I realize that my name has a seven in it. And it, it can mean completion, but a lot of the Satanists like to use this number, including the number 21. We're in the 21st century, so something's bound to go down. Okay. Um, so basically, his emblem looks like there's two very prominent sevens and then another hidden seven, but it actually looks like a 666 in Hebrew. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. Uh, I, I just need someone to talk to about this. I don't know. I haven't gone that deep into it yet. This is the most I've seen on it. Uh, this guy's definitely full, full of himself. And basically, they're looking at him as a world leader. He says that basically, generals are already bowing down to him in America. Something along those lines. And I don't know. I'm just waiting on somebody to say, that's not true. Like, I never said that to you. And if they do uplift him, then I don't know. But it, he basically said that everything's already been done, but it will be set in stone 
in a ceremony and he explained the ceremony basically he said he's going to be walking through gates he's going to sit in the chair really interesting he'd be the first king in a very long time they're going to crown him and then they're going to do a ceremony later so they're going to I don't know what happened, but he said that they're going to pass around the pictures of him sitting on the throne and then they're going to do a ceremony after that. All I'm saying is it's very interesting because in Matthew 24, it states that when you see him sitting in the holy place, I don't know, that's what it alludes to. I don't know if this is a holy place. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I th I'm... I need to look into it. I need to find out whatever's hidden, uh, pray about it, so on and so forth. I just think I should put it out there because it is fresh. And it looks like it's coming to, fast, uh, to pass very quickly. And, like, one thing I've noticed is that there's no time to spare these days. I mean, if it's a false alarm, then so be it. But we need to be watching out for people like this. Um, what does this have to do with America? According to another video that I saw, the woman spoke in regards to how he's going to be basically over Canada and a couple of the states and goes into detail about how Trump and him are working together to come up with all these different antidotes and awesome, like awesomeness like basically where you're gonna get pension you're gonna get paid and it's it's gonna be like a communism thing it looks like you guys uh watch the video let me know what you guys think i'll come back on a later day with some more information before i go i want to talk about something that look don't shoot the messenger i don't know how to explain this in a video and i don't know how to say this in passing there's some things that I've said in previous videos. If you don't believe me, go back to them. I've said it in passing, never actually 100% went into what I'm talking about. But basically, one of the things that he says is that the Vatican's biggest secret is that there's two Jesuses. So, look, you guys. This is something that I have noticed. I don't know what that was. This is something I have noticed um, in the Bible. There's two different... What's... There's two different accounts of Jesus Christ in the Bible. Okay? Uh, listen. Hear me out. Okay? Hear me out. Like I said, Messiah or Christ can be a title and it can be used both ways so one thing i've seen like i said in the bible is two different accounts and you'll see this in the genealogies i've said this in a previous video there's in the book of luke and then the book of matthew for some reason they always contrast with each other okay now you can look at it as different angles a lot of people like to do to get like different snapshots of one picture. And my son's being crazy. You can get different um, snapshots of the same picture, right? But different angles. I don't think that's how the gospels necessarily work. That can be part of it, but it's not the whole thing. All I know is that the, there's two different genealogies. In Luke, he opens up with the genealogies and in Matthew, he opens up, um, he talks about the genealogies before the birth of Jesus. Um, in the birth of Jesus in Matthew, it's completely different from the birth of Jesus in Luke. Okay? Um, and I do want to go into this more on, on a later video. I believe that, you know, Jesus, how does this fit in the Bible? Jesus said, basically, that we are him in a sense okay and you can allude to this where he said where was where were you when i needed to be clothed where were you when i was hungry where were you when i was in jail and you didn't visit me 
And then his disciples said, Lord, when were you ever naked and needed clothing? When were you ever hungry? And he's basically stating that the way that we treat each other, if we don't love our brother in Christ, then that is downcasting the Holy Spirit. So it's talking down to him, right? So because we are the body of Christ, collectively, and we're bashing each other, or if we're not taking care of each other, then that affects him, okay? And ultimately us, because that, that equals judgment. I don't know if I'm explaining this enough, but so this is one entity of, of Jesus, right, in the future. I, ho I hope I'm explaining this correctly. I can do a better breakdown later on. But um, son of man is the best way. I have videos on this, but I don't know if they're very clear because it was when I first started. It's one of the first revelations I've ever received. Um, so it's, it's hard when the Lord shows you something. These things are not taught by man. These things come from the Holy Spirit. So it's hard to see for yourself. And it's hard to understand when, it, when it's outside of your body. I don't know how to explain it. On the inside, I get revelation and me and Jesus are like, like that. And we get it. I, I, like, I get him. But when I try to explain it, it doesn't sound the same. So, the Son of Man is basically, the best way I can describe it is it's an evil twin. Okay? Um, so, you have Christ, the Christ and you have the Antichrist. So, that's the best way I can describe it because Jesus gives, he alludes to everything. Jesus never says anything flat out. Everything is a parable. Everything's a metaphor. Everything is poetic in nature. So, uh, everything was son of man, you know, son of man has the authority to do this, son of man has the authority to do that, so on and so forth. So, basically, even at the end, the disciples ask him, what is up with this son of man thing? And then he alludes back to Jacob's ladder. So, that is a study that I've been dying to do, but I um, haven't gotten to it yet. But basically, he's pointing to Jacob's time. Uh, so basically, what we're going to see is that this man's going to come, and he's, he's going to be a counterfeit. That's just, he's going to copy everything Jesus did. He's going to try to walk in his shoes. He's going to be healing people and, and doing A, B, C, D. But here's the thing. Do we have faith in man? Or do we have faith? In Jesus Christ, the true Messiah. Okay, not someone, not not a man that's walking around saying that he's him. Um, so that's one thing that Jesus always uh, gave a a clue to, especially when it came to healing. He always said, "Your faith has healed you. If you believe, if you have faith, I can heal you." And one of the things he said is that a prophet is not honored in his own neighborhood, right? So he couldn't do it. He couldn't perform any miracles there because nobody would accept him. Nobody believed in him. So what we can see right now is that this man may have his little three year ministry. OK, maybe he might go around convincing people that he is the Messiah. OK. Just like Jesus did. Son of man. OK. Jesus is the son of God. He is the son of God, and I've made that very clear, okay? Everyone knows this, but yet we still associate son of man with Jesus, okay? Jesus was the second Adam. Mommy, mama. He was a new creation. Mama. Yes, baby. Can I hold that? He was the new creation. And through him, we are new creations in Christ. Meditate on this, study into it. The reason why I wanted to bring that to light is because I don't want this man to, to weasel his way into anything. You know what I mean? I'm trying to say there's two Jesuses, and he probably will point out the two different genealogies and all these things. Look, Jesus talked about how King David... Right, he basically he had it out with the Pharisees or Sadducees, like he like usual, and when he had it out with them this time, 
he basically stated, well, what did he say? He said, if the Messiah is the son of David, then why did David call him Lord? Think about that, right? David's a king. Why would he call someone else Lord or a son Lord? So David means beloved. Start piecing some things together. And my son is playing with the toilet. <laughs> God bless you guys. Um, study into it, look into it, and let me know what you think. Just so there's no confusion, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit of what I was talking about. It's not easy to explain, but pretty much here, if you pause and read, you will see that Jesus is used as a title when you look up the name Jesus it just means the savior or a savior okay like I said Jesus is the savior but people are using it as a title okay um, and then Emmanuel as you can see here also means God with us so in essence it's really just letting us know that Jesus Christ came he came to save us from our sins and to give us the Holy Spirit, a.k.a. God with us. It's all extremely symbolic, and it's just a layered meaning. Here's another Bible verse that I referenced, just in regards to Jesus talking about how David was a spiritual father of something to come. Now, I don't want to make this long. I do want to do an actual formal video on it. But these are just some of the Bible verses that are used uh, to see kind of opposition between Son of God and Son of Man. And what Jesus is doing is he's showing his people how to walk in his footsteps. Okay? He shows what we have authority over and what our job is as his followers but he's also showing a contrast of some type of deceit. Someone that will come in his name and will try to scam people. Jesus is the son of God. And I'm going to show you another Bible verse where he commends Simon Peter for knowing this. And here we go. Uh, this is the mic dropper. John 3.18, the only begotten Son of God. Now, it's another Bible verse or verses that you have to meditate on. Really, really, really meditate on this because this is new stuff that is not taught by man. This is a revelation from the Father in heaven. And here's my final proof. So Adam means man. That's what it means. So it can go in either way. There's always a good and a bad behind every word. It could be derogatory or it could be good. Adam could mean you're of the earth or worldly, which is bad. Or it could mean within the new line, the new Adam that's talked about in the New Testament, which is Jesus Christ. So Adam was used 27 times in the King James Version. But I thought that I should just go ahead and get the best examples of what I was talking about because uh, it shows a contrast between Adam and Christ and his characteristics, and Christ's characteristics. And then I'm going to show you a Strongest Concordance breakdown of Adam, because that might shock some people. Everything is symbolic in the Bible, you guys. And you can go ahead and pause and read through. But folks, this, these are just the 
scholarly notes that are written that are not in the King James Bible. Okay? This is the breakdown from King James and from other Bible verses where they go in and they say, you know, this was omitted in this, you know, translation and it was added in this translation and it'll say some Greek manuscripts say this and that. But mankind equals Adam. This is something that we don't normally learn. Man, the churches would really be upset if we cut our hands on this stuff, huh? 